Welcome back GBiz 25 digital and social media class. This lecture is called the myths and facts of social and digital media. And the reason why we put this as digital and social media is because this class deals with both as facts of it, right? Both both um both assets of of an online media. So social meaning your connection your facebook your twitter your, your communicating back and forth and we'll discuss we'll define actually what social media is in this lecture as well as digital media so your websites your emails your 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 blog posts without comments stuff like that and so that's what we're going to be doing for this lecture and so hello again this is professor nick carbonar remember you could find all of my uh um uh, lectures and everything like that at my YouTube page, uh, Professor Nick Carbonara, and I'm gonna, um, I may, each each of the videos that you have access to in this course aren't on the YouTube page, but there are videos out there that will supplement this stuff. So uh, the myths and facts of social and digital media is what we're gonna be talking about today. So the last lecture, if you tuned in, was all about your taxonomy level. It was all about where you're at on social media. And so you may be thinking, yeah, you know, I'm at the lurking phase, right? We talked about lurking phase last lecture. I'm at the lurking phase in which I, uh, in which I'm just kind of, you know, sampling stuff out and kind of learning the information and stuff like that. But you know what, like that, that Twitter thing, uh, I'll, I'll be on Facebook, I'm good. That Twitter stuff, I'll, I don't need any of that stuff out there. And so I'm going to come to you today and talk to you about the myths and facts of social and digital media, the, the myths and facts of social and digital media. So. Let, let's get started with this, uh, the myths and facts of digital and social media. And so um, one of the first things you see here is what is social media? And let's read that definition. Social media consists of online interactions that allow people and businesses to communicate and share ideas, personal information, and information about products and services. And so the one thing that you need to realize about this course is, is that um, this course is designed, GBiz 25, General Business 25. We're coming at it through a business-like approach, right? Your business branding, your personal branding regarding your business situation. So when we talk about this, interactions that allow people and businesses to communicate and share ideas, that's true. However, we're coming on the portion of the businesses to communicate and share ideas. Um, personal information and information about products and services. So from our standpoint, that's what we're doing. Yes, it's, it's good to get into, you know, the easy stuff about, oh my gosh, did you see that GIF of where somebody did something or, or that meme, did you see that meme? Well, unless it's for business purposes or unless it's generating a profit somewhere or generating sales leads or something like that, I mean, we could be here all day talking about social media and, and what goes on on social media and stuff like that. However, we have to keep it focused, right? We have to keep it focused and, and, and let me stress that to you. Right, we all, you know, we're all not immune to to our to the Twitter feeds and, and and stuff posting by politicians and celebrities and all that type of stuff. Remember, this class is a general business one. We're focusing on that portion of it. If you want to talk politics on social media, great. Go to another class and talk politics on social media. We're not going to sit here online and, and bash presidents and, and bash people that oppose your viewpoints and stuff like that. We're not going to do that in this class. This class is all about general business. So when we talk about social responsibility and ethics, yes, you know, stuff may come up when we talk about laws and regulations and stuff. However, um, let's keep it focused, right? We need to keep it focused. And I'm going to show you um, the seven myths about social media, what people may think they know about social media, but um, may not know about social media. And so let's uh let's get let's get started on that so um the seven myths of social media this is what we're gonna be talking about social media is just a fad right people always say oh it's gonna come in and out you know social media is just for the young you know i'm too old to start social media it's only for these young kids that are on snapchat and stuff nobody knows how to do anything anymore so um and i'm gonna tell why that's a myth there's no return in social media marketing meaning if you're trying to promote your stuff there's no return in it and i will tell you that is a myth Social media marketing isn't right for my business or right for the business, right? Oh man, my, my, my clients, they're not on this platform, all that type of stuff. And then uh, social media marketing is new. Social media is too time consuming and then it's free, right? So we're gonna go through all these. So let's read this first one. Instead, you know, it says social media myth number one, social media is just a fad. Well, instead social media is founded in community, socialization and word of mouth marketing. 
it's based on a stable premise, right? That connects, that people are social and want to connect with other people. Related to technological evolution that continues to provide new and attractive means for people to interact. And it's rooted in core trends and behaviors um, that remain stable over time. So think about it. Um, if you fly, if any of you have ever flown on an airplane and you're flying at night and you're going from LA to New York, let's say, you're flying, you're looking, you have a window seat, you look out the window and then all, it's dark, dark, dark because it's nighttime and then all of a sudden a bunch of lights pop up and you know that triggers to you that there are, there's a city, there's a, there's a city coming up, right? And there may be a big metropolitan hub, right? You're flying to, to New York and all of a sudden it lights up and oh, the, we're in Denver, right? Same thing with social media, right? It's not going anywhere because people want to connect with each other. It's just a new tool to connect. It's not something new. It's just a new tool to connect, right? It's founded in, in a word of mouth marketing, meaning you're marketing uh, through word of mouth. Before, if you had a bad experience at a, uh, at a restaurant, you could only tell your friends about it. Now you could go on Yelp and tell a lot more people. Same principles, just different medium to do it, right? Um, before, like when we went from radio to television, you, you heard stuff, but now you put a visual behind it. Same thing, just more enhanced, right? Uh, related to technological influences is, is key, right? And the biggest one was in 2007 when the iPhone was created. When the iPhone came out, that changed the game for social media. It basically created a bunch of social media platforms that we know today. Twitter wouldn't be around unless the iPhone was there. So um, <clears throat> it that real life, real time action it's based off of the mobile telephone. So mobile, well, yeah, mobile telephone, I guess. So um, going forward, it's going to keep developing because tech keeps developing. So where's the next future trend with that? So that is myth number one. Let's go to myth. Let's go to myth number two. Oh, before we go to myth number two, let's read some of this. So it says, these are just information. Nielsen Global Trust in Advertising Survey in 2015 said millennials show the highest level of trust in 18 of 19 advertising channels. Humor resonates. Um, roughly six in 10 say they trust ads on TV and in newspapers and magazines. Two thirds trust consumer opinions posted online. Branded websites are the second most trusted advertising behind friends and family. And so that was key right there, branded websites. And that's what we're gonna be doing, right? I mean, our class, you're going to have a branded website to yourself. And if the advertising agencies say branded websites are the second most trusted advertising format behind recommendations, right? Second most behind recommendations and family. Well, think about that for your own personal brand when you're trying to go out for a job. It is the second most trusted. So if you have, um, you know, your recommendation letters, that's probably the most trusted. The, the interview got you in there. But if you could say, hey, I got a website and branded websites are the second most trusted advertising format and you put why you should be the candidate on your website, man, that speaks volumes to the, to the um, job market out there. That speaks volumes to your, to your, um, to your potential employers. So uh, that's what I put up there for that to kind of prove a little further. It's not just the fad. These are some social media statistics. Look at that, Facebook, 2 billion monthly active users. Twitter, 328 million active users. Even Pinterest over here. 150 million, Facebook Messenger, 1.2 billion, Snapchat, 166, Instagram took a huge jump, 700 million. And so this was updated in July. These are the most recent stats. So um, uh, think, of, oopsie, sorry. Think about that, right? Think about, um, think about these statistics right here. And every semester I do this, those stats just keep going up, right? The stats just keep going up. So uh, make sure when you're, when you're looking at these stats that it's not just a fad. Maybe one platform, even though it doesn't have as many users on it, is, is geared towards your potential target market. And so that's what we're really talking about here. Social media myth number two says that uh, social media is just for the young. And that is totally and completely false. And so if we look at this, this is where I got it from, socialmediatoday.com. Uh, and so, Demographic composition percentage. So meaning this, orange, this orange color says ages 18 to 24. The pink is for ages 65 and over. That's a spectrum of the age groups across the United States. This is US, right? Facebook, you can't really see one platform that's more dominant or one age group that's dominant on, on Facebook, right? And it goes from 16% for, for 18 to 24 year olds to 15% for 55 to 64. So that means on, on Facebook, we roughly have the same percentage of ages that are 55 and over compared to, we actually have more people 55 and over than 25 and younger, 
on Facebook. And so that's that's huge. I mean, that that's that's kind of crazy that we have that that thing. And as you go down the uh, the websites and the and the social media apps, the newer the app, the more younger it gets. That's the reason why we have all these uh, different platforms coming out on different stuff. So Snapchat, of course, look at that, like seventy something percent of it's below the ages of below the age of forty four, right? Below the age of thirty four. And so um, it's not just for the young. Some platforms gear towards the young. Absolutely true. However, there is always a percentage share of um, of the higher age demographic than 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 what people previously think and it's only going to get bigger these age gap these age groups because as the 54 year old moves into the 55 category as the 55 moves into the 65 their social media accounts don't probably don't necessarily go away so um, they are a leading percentage of social networks are, are, are very distributed amongst age groups right and so if we look uh, if we look at social media myth number three there's no return. So instead, social media returns are difficult to measure. They are difficult to measure, and we'll talk about that. A frequent topic for conferences of online marketing experts, measured in a variety of different ways, such as savings, promotion, reputation, increased brand loyalty. And so um, <clears throat> one of the things that I mentioned in my other lectures is that I just got done getting certified with Twitter Flight School. And what Twitter Flight School did was, it's a free service. Any one of you can, can go through it. It's free, uh, you just go online and and complete the courses and stuff like that. There are videos, online lectures, and then you have to take tests and stuff. But uh, Twitter Flight School, what it does is it shows you how on Twitter how to get your um, how to justify your marketing returns to your marketing department. See, in the business world, money isn't money isn't infinite, right? Money is finite, meaning you only have a certain amount of dollars you could spend throughout the throughout the year. And so marketing departments are really hesitant about social media because of the fact that they know that you need it, but it's a little hesitant because it's hard to measure your return. So um, what analytics does, what, when social media analytics, it, it allows you to justify your dollars. And so um, it says there's no return in social media marketing, but there is, right? There is a return in social media marketing. And if we look here, it says it right here, measured in a variety of different ways, such as savings and customer service, word of mouth promotion, brand awareness, which we'll see in a second, um, reputation, increased brand loyalty, and sales lead generation. So people want to be on social media. It's just, it's a little hard to, to justify it to your manager to spend X amount of dollars on Facebook when there's no real way, which there is, but this is the myth, is that there's no real way to justify your dollars. Well, there are, and we're gonna talk about that. One of the very last modules we have in this section before our website is all on analytics. And we're going to be talking about that in analytics on different platforms. So um, let's let's see further with our uh, with our lecture so far. Um, benefits to social media marketing. They say the biggest benefit for businesses. This was taken by the 2016 Social Media Marketing Industry Report. So Social Media Examiner is one of the biggest uh, social media magazines out there that that are one of the leaders in in, um, in social media and they took a poll of a bunch of uh, businesses that are on social media and 88 percent said increased exposure was the biggest benefit to having social media marketing 78 percent increased traffic and all the way down and developing loyal fans let's see another one social media myth number four uh, says instead social media marketing uh, social media isn't right for this business instead social media marketing is just as relevant to b2b companies as to b2c so B2B is business to business, right? Remember that, business to business, meaning companies buying and selling to each other. So Starbucks sell, buys and sells from a supplier for cups. That's a business to business transaction. Compared to a B2C, which is business to consumer, that means it's to the consumer. Um, it's, it's what we normally see. Starbucks tells to you coffee and everything like that. So I just wanted to point that out there. Has a powerful ability to drive word of mouth, influences search results as a resource because search results frequently include social media sites. So if you didn't know, the more platforms you're on, the more traffic you drive, the website you have drives traffic to it. When people Google you and search you organically, we're not talking about paid right now, we're talking about organic growth, meaning from the bottom up. Uh, when people Google you, you're able, your search results able to come up naturally by the more sites you're on, the more platforms you're on, the more 
connections you're on because it's showing that peop when people try to search your name, maybe you're on multiple platforms, those platforms come up so people can actually see what they're looking for. Um, even if businesses don't believe in the value of engaging in social conversations as a part of marketing, there's no denying the value of a strong business or product presence in search results. So there, there's no there's no denying that, right? If you if you Google a company, let me see if I can put them both up here. Yeah, if you Google a company, and they are not on Google, right? They are not on Google. You get a little iffy about that. You get a little worried that, well, what's going on? Why aren't they on Google? Is it is it a legitimate company? Is it this? So strong search results are huge for companies. And if they're still doing cold calls, they're, they're in the past, right? You can find everything you need on the internet through social media. And so coming from a uh, marketing standpoint, coming from a business standpoint, um, social media is right for every business out there. One of the most commonly used, and I'll put my little face right up there, uh, most commonly used social media platforms, king is Facebook, right? Facebook is king. Um, it, it's huge. That number even went up since last year. That was at 93%. It went up to 94. Twitter actually took a hit. Went from like 70-something to 68. LinkedIn uh, roughly stayed the same. Instagram went from 44 to 54. And if you are on Instagram, you know the, the increased technological innovations with it. Well, of course, then the media... The media gets better because the technology gets better. So commonly used social media platforms, Instagram's really doing good. YouTube went down, maybe because of all the censoring that they do. They're, they're getting in trouble with a lot of uh, censorship stuff and demonetizing accounts, meaning people aren't making money on YouTube. Well, if you're gonna kick people off and not have them make money, they're just gonna go to another platform, right? So platform development is huge. So if you're not a business major and you're app development, develop a better YouTube and maybe you'll make some money, so who knows? Pinterest went down significantly. It went from 40 to 30 from last year. So Pinterest isn't as strong as what it is. But if you think about it, Facebook adopted a lot of features that Pinterest may have had, right? Adopted a lot of features that YouTube have, Facebook Live compared to YouTube Live. So a lot of these things, um, and we'll see it when we get to the tradition uh, evolution of social media next week, they really interconnect with each other. Um, <clears throat> changes in social media so since 2016 right since 2016 for the first time in the history of our study facebook has passed linkedin as the most important platform meaning instead of business to businesses going on linkedin which is normally what you go to right it's it's a business platform linkedin is like a business profile um for your, your company they're now going to facebook the, the the company that's used for business to consumers so that's why I say Facebook is becoming dominant, not just in not just in personal connections, but in business to business connections as well. Social media myth number five is that the uh, in, that the social media marketing is new. It's not new. Technology is new. Conversations are now public. We we know what's going on now, right? It's like nothing new is going on. It's just we now know about it. Consumers are already on social sites talking about businesses on their Facebook pages, blogs, Twitter accounts, whether a business acknowledges or not. So this is key, right? Your business is being talked about no matter what. Whether you're online or you're offline, they are talking about you. So might as well get online so you could know the conversation. Monitor monitor the site so that you're able to join the conversation, correct the bad stuff that's being said about you, correct the bad, uh, talk, encourage the good stuff that's being talked about you, better marketing just on social media. And so let's see. Let's see some stats. Compared to the technology being different, desktop 35% last year, 65% now is on mobile. So think about your sites. When we do our sites, maybe you wanna make it more mobile friendly because more people are on mobile. Social media, is, uh, number six. Media is, it's too time consuming, right? It's too time consuming. Three key ways to limit this time investment in social media marketing. Look for underutilized employees, leverage efficiency tools, which we'll talk about during the analytics portion, and use mobile devices to boost efficiency. So it's too time consuming, right? Um, meaning this, um, that was the myth, right? That's the myth. And so let me tell you about this. It is a lot of work. Social media is a lot of work. It's, 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 it's very time consuming. However, it doesn't have to be too time consuming. There's platforms out there, which I'm currently going through certification for to become a master on, is called Hootsuite. 
It is a uh, it is a platform which we'll talk about during the analytics portion in this class where you're able to link up all your accounts on one website and you could pre-schedule your Facebook posts at the same time as pre-scheduling tweets and Instagram posts and everything like that. So there are efficiency tools, right? There are underutilized employees and if they're not, right now they're hiring those underutilized employees, meaning this. Companies don't have people in their in their company right now that can do social media because there are no classes that that in the, in the university level and the college level on social media. There may be communication classes, but there's no business or technology classes on it. For the most part, there are at some schools, but um, the reason why is because a lot of the industry professionals they're not going to leave their six figure job to come over and teach, right? So it's up to us as the professors to go out into the um, tech world make these connections, understand who these people are, and then see what needs to be developed. So we're, and I say we because two other te two other colleagues of mine in the COS department teach social media as well. We're going to conferences, we're, we're learning the newest trends, we're getting certified in the newest stuff. So um, the, the industry professionals, we contact them, we have advisory boards where we contact uh, social media companies and stuff. But they're, they need people that know social media. And so this class is very important because by the end of the class, you're able to know social media in a way that you could be one of those employees, right? They could hire you as an intern, maybe as a, as a uh, part-time position, as a full-time position, who knows, right? You leverage those efficiency tools and then use your mobile device. So tablets, right? Your tablet is a mobile device. It just doesn't have to be your phone. Anything that moves is a mobile device. So tablet, laptop, that's why all those efficiency tools are out there to help you and why a lot of these sites and a lot of these platforms have applications to help you manage this stuff on, on your mobile device. For example, in one of my classes, I uh, record my students doing an activity and the students were shocked because while they were doing it, my face-to-face -face introduction, introduction to business class, GBiz5, I filmed them on my phone, right? I filmed them on, um, I live streamed it on YouTube from my phone once it was live streamed, I uploaded it using the YouTube Creator Studio on my phone app, um, put a custom thumbnail together, posted it, and then emailed it out all while they were doing it in class. And by the end of class, we already had views on that video, right? And they were like, how did you do that? We didn't see you on the computer. I'm like, it's all done mobile, right? You could do stuff mobily. And so, or, or mobile, <laughs> mobily? I don't know if that's even a word, but you could do stuff through your mobile device. That's what we're saying. And then let's see some stuff here. It's too time consuming. These are all the different social media um, leveraging tools that you could actually use. So you have customer care, you have, uh, and, you'll, and you'll see the reason why, the reason why I'm getting uh, certified in Hootsuite is because under customer care, you have Hootsuite. Under uh, listening, right? Listening, this is a huge Venn diagram, you have Hootsuite. Under social selling, you have Hootsuite. Under publishing and engagement, you have Hootsuite. Under promotions, you have Hootsuite. Under curation, you have Hootsuite. Under analytics, it's not really on analytics, but we put it on there because each site has its own analytics stuff, and these things are, are paid for analytics. Um, but it's Hootsuite, and so that's why I talk about it a lot in this class because it's everywhere. You can do a lot of stuff with, with, with Hootsuite. And then the last myth, social media is free, right? So before we even start this one, let me, let me ask you a question. Let me tell you a little antidote. Let's say somebody gives you a puppy, right? Here's a free puppy, right? And everybody loves free puppies, right? Because it's a nice, cute little dog. It's so cuddly, it's furry, it's cute. Think about your favorite animal. And if somebody gave it to you free, how happy you would be. All right, now think about that. Now do this. Think about what it's like at two in the morning when the dog or the cat is meowing or barking or having to go to the bathroom or having to go on a walk when you're sick or having to buy food or having to uh, buy vet costs, all that type of stuff. So yes, the animal may have been free, but there is a cost to the other stuff surrounding it. And so that's how we kind of define it here. So. Let's look at this. While most sites do not have a fee for usage, because you don't sign up for Facebook with a cost, right? Some of them do for, for certain aspects of it, but most of them are free. Time and resources. Time and resources are not infinite, right? Those are finite things. Um, you only have cer certain, many, certain hours in the day, certain amount of hours in the day. You only have certain amount of resources for your, for your company. Fees for producing and creating content. Those nice little videos on Facebook where you see 
the tasty food company and they promote like a video they push a video of how to make a grilled steak in in 60 seconds that type of thing how to make dinner in 60 seconds it takes time that takes effort right um it there are fees for producing and creating that content fees for consultants or agencies right so so as a consultant as an agent you get paid for that and so our goal is by the end of this class you could be on that pathway to be a social media consultant, right? Maybe you need to get your certifications like I have and, and do that type of thing. But you could go out there and, and tell people, this is how I do it. This is how you should do it. These are the results that you'll get. So um, you have fees for consultants or agencies involved in building and executing the social media platform. And so let's look at the, uh, let's look at the next one. So for instance, and so before I even go on with that, um, what I'm going to show you next is how a company can engage because with one of our homework assignments, it's, it's all about business interaction and how can businesses interact using the social media um, myth. And so while most sites, uh, while most sites don't really go on social media, I mean, a lot of them do. I'm not going to say, well, most sites, I shouldn't say most sites, but companies that aren't on social media are really losing out. They're losing out on a segment of the population. If you're not on social media and this class is just getting you to get on there, you're gonna be opened up to a whole world of knowledge. When it was my first time on Twitter, it was like, whoa, there's a whole nother world out there, right? Instagram, there's a whole nother, people are doing other things out there, Snapchat especially, right? You saw your friend snap for the first time and you're like, dude, I did not know you like to do that type of stuff. So um, it's there, right? So make sure we're on there make sure we're trying to go forward with it if you're in this class and you're like well, i don't want to do twitter right i don't want i don't want to do twitter I, I it's just not for me well you know in your english class you may not want to write a five paragraph essay but you have to right in your math class you don't want to do the pythagorean theorem but you have to it's it's your math class and so same thing here with social media you will be creating these sites right but however this is from more of a business standpoint right here and, and we could kind of see what companies do and I'm going to show you what one company does using humor using that stuff that I told you in social media myth number one about like humor being one of the slides that humor was the most effective uh, uh, way to, to reach the Western culture and so one company that does a really good job of humor is Wendy's right Wendy's so uh, let me show you what it, what it looks like right here so we have Wendy says our beef is way too cool to ever be frozen right and they promoted that meaning this this promoted thing meaning they paid for it to be on there Right? They paid for it to be on there. But look at their reaction. They got 3,800 retweets. That means 38 people shared this post. And you had 20, over 26,000 people like the post. Right, So obviously, you're getting some stuff there. But, but look at, again, this picture that paid money to do it. The actual Wendy's uh, Twitter account was free. However, the promotion, that costs money. The, the picture content, they had to pay somebody for the photo. They had to pay a model for the hand model. They had to pay for the burger to be made. They had to pay. This was a this was a paid thing, right? And so they have to pay for that type of stuff. But let's see how they interact with their customers. All right? Let's see how they interact with their customers. So this guy, Thuggy D, says, Wendy's, your beef is frozen and we all know it. Y'all know we laugh at your slogan, fresh never frozen, like you're really a joke. They go, sorry to hear you think that, but you're wrong. We've only ever used fresh beef since we were founded in 1969. Again, Twitter enables you right twitter enables you to uh and i'll put myself little right here twitter enables you to actually talk not as professional as you would but still keep it professional right so they're 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 sorry to hear you think that so then thuggy d goes so you deliver it raw on a hot truck wendy's goes where do you store cold things that are fr that aren't frozen thuggy d goes y'all should give up mcdonald's got you beat with the dope ass breakfast, right? Wendy's then goes, you don't have to bring them into this just because you forgot refrigerators for a second there, right? Again, knowing the platform, going through that taxonomy level, knowing which platform they're on, knowing the people there, understanding it, right? Understanding the um, understanding the culture of Twitter, understanding who that person is on Twitter going back and forth. They're just a troll. They're just looking for attention. So Wendy's gave it to them, right? I mean, on some of those tweets he got, 400 retweets, right? His profile went up. I bet he got more followers. I bet he got more likes, more everything. Why? Because he was doing it, not because he was like, maybe he was being mean, maybe he was being dumb. I don't know, but um, that's all about the social media game. And so Wendy's understood that. So Wendy's went back and forth with him, right? Wendy's wasn't trying to be rude, but if they created a press release and called out some grandmother that said something like, that, yeah, that would be the right, that would be the wrong time and place, and they would be reprimanded for it in the public um, sphere, and rightly so. Right, rightly so. 
So Wendy's, Wendy's did a good job going back and forth. And you can see here, and I'm going to post on there, on, on their uh, on this thing I put at Wendy's that's their Twitter handle I put hashtag savage right because that's what people were talking about it um, but other stuff right Burger King just came out with jalapeno chicken fries how are you gonna beat that Wendy's with literally anything on our menu right keeping it funny keeping it funny Wendy's had a, a, a tweet message with uh, this person named Kylie over here on the right hand side hey Wendy's how are you Wendy's gives them a thumbs up emoji Wendy's, what's your favorite thing at McDonald's? Wendy's, the exit, right? And this is really Wendy's. It's not like a fake account. This blue check mark right here means it's a real account. It means they're actually verified by by um, by Wendy's. So um, the, the the point of this is this. The point of this is that you can engage with customers on social media. And when you look at one of your discussion questions, it's going to ask you. It's going to ask you um, how uh, how can you interact better with your customers regarding your, your business? To, um, how can you interact with your customers? So Wendy's use Twitter as a form of humor and communications. I'm looking for what you can do for uh, for that, right? What you can do for that. So um, with that, I'll end this lecture. I know it was a little longer than the last one, but it's really key. This first week is really key with a lot of the stuff. So with that, I will see you. If you have any questions, email me, chat me, tweet me, message me, whatever you need to do to get a hold of me but just do it so that we stay on top of things, all right? Until then, I will see you online next time.